Ah, uh, welcome everyone to our alumni spotlight. Today we are joined by Buffalo great Tara Bjorklund. Tara, welcome. How are you? Well, hello. Good. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, JR. Yeah, we're very excited that you're joining us and I know Buff fans are thrilled to have you. But before we start, I need everyone who's listening to really understand what a legend you are in Colorado women's basketball. Um, Tara is one of the most decorated um, players in our women's basketball history. She's top 10 in almost every statistical category, um, including number three in career field goals, free throws, number four in scoring, almost 2,000 points. Um, Tara scored number five in games played, six in block shots, ninth in rebounding. I mean, I could go on and on. Truly, Tara, we are honored to have you with us. Um, I wish you could suit up for us next year, but we'll have to settle for an interview. <laughs> All right, that works. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, so Tara, of all the, the incredible individual academic awards, or excuse me, individual basketball awards, um, what's even more impressive is how great your teams were. You know, your teams were so successful uh, in your time at Colorado, four straight NCAA tournaments and, and so much more. Share with us what made these teams so great and so special. Sure. Um, I mean, I think... Well, I think it definitely started kind of with that coaching staff and just their recruiting to bring this kind of group together. I mean, obviously, when you're recruiting, you look at um, not only just basketball skills, but personalities and kind of um, who's going to fit well together. And I felt like they put together some teams where um, the players really complemented each other really well. Um, so I think that was a big part. And of course, you know, the tone was always set from the top down. Um, you had Coach Barry yeah. and her staff who, you know, were very disciplined and held themselves to high themselves to high expectations, and they were very high expectations set for ourselves as well. And yeah. we were held accountable to those things. So I think those are some of the key parts was that coaching staff. But when I think about the characteristics of our team, we I think overall just like really enjoyed hanging out together. I think. We had some good chemistry um, as a team. I mean, obviously not everyone's best friends on a team, but I think everyone respected each other. And I think some of those friendships and bonds off the court really carried over um, onto the court to help us, you know, trust each other and have that chemistry piece. Tell us, tell us some of your favorite memories or, or favorite memory uh, during your time as a student athlete. Um, I mean, yeah, that's really hard because there's four years of lots of, of, you know, just yeah. fun times. But I think some some of the things that really stand out to me um, were just some of our trips on the road. And um, I know, you know, the coaches always did a really nice job of trying to schedule some games that um, were in locations where, you know, you had players who, you know, because at the time we were in the Big 12, so we were playing, you know, between Iowa and Texas. But for those players who were either on the East Coast or West Coast, you know, they didn't get a chance to really play in front of their families. And so um, I think some of those trips were really memorable. Um, I remember, you know, going out to California to play because we had, I think it was Aisha Bowman and Sarita Stafford and, you know, going to a fun restaurant and doing some karaoke with the team was a blast. Um, we had another trip where we had two players that were from New York, upstate New York, Kate Fagan and Di Spencer. And so, you know, we got to you know, travel there. We saw Niagara Falls, which was freezing, but fun nonetheless. Oh. It was also New Year's Eve. Um, and so we got to, you know, spend New Year's Eve in a bus traveling, you know, to the next location, but we got some Cracker Barrel. And I remember, you know, they've got all the little TVs on the bus. And the only time we got yep. to watch anything on, on the bus was to watch film but this was like the one time we got to watch a movie um and I, I just remember that being really fun and getting to the hotel and you know using the hotel cups to have some sprite to toast in new year's eve which was probably at nine o'clock at night right before our curfew um and yeah. then my senior year we got to go to minnesota as well so you know randy Wirt was also from minnesota and so it was just fun being able to go to williams arena to play and I know my hometown had like a busload of fans that came up um, to watch us. So I think, you know, it wasn't so much like the actual games. It was just those like fun memories of traveling with the team. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's funny. You mentioned getting to watch something other than game film. Um, I can imagine with Coach Barry, that didn't happen very often. <laughs> no, not a lot. But, you know, that, that, that's why that trip was so memorable is because we got to watch it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, okay, another question about um, memory. So is there a certain game, and you were a part of so many big, important, you know, momentous games, but is there one that stands out to you as, as sort of the most memorable or most fun? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I guess each season definitely had games that stood out, but I think the 2001-2002 season when I was a sophomore definitely um, stood out. There was lots of games within that season that were um, – a lot of fun and at the time you know the big 12 was similar to what you're experiencing in the pac 12 where it's just like half the team half the teams are ranked in the top 25 right so it was like not an easy schedule um but the game that stands out from that season was obviously when we um were in the ncaa tournament we made it through the first and second round we got to host and we played southern and then lsu but the sweet 16 game we played stanford and of course, you know, they were coached by Tara Vanderveer and some of their some of their big name players were, you know, Nicole Powell and Lindsay Yamasaki were on the team. And I don't remember, I mean, it wasn't like a stellar performance of a game. I feel like there was almost nerves on both ends at the beginning of the game because I remember it being really low scoring and no one could really pull away. But I remember those last couple minutes in the game, um, Aisha Bowman hit a shot to put us up, I think, put us up four points and that was with about two minutes left. Of course, Stanford comes down and, you know, they've got their sharpshooters and Nicole Powell hits a three and, you know, so we're only up by one and it kind of just goes back and forth and Randy Wirt got fouled with about eight, eight or 10 seconds left in the game and she nailed them both and, um, you know, kind of sealed the win for us. But it was just so fun to be able to, you know, be in that NCAA um, just, the NCAA spot and to be able to go on to the elite eight and be there with teammates. And we had lots of family that had come to the games and it was just a really, really fun experience. And so that's a game that definitely stands out for me. Uh, okay. Last question. Um, tell us who, who inspired you, you know, as a young athlete, I knew, I know you grew up playing sports and were always involved, but, but who was your inspiration growing up? Yeah. Um, well, as you know, like I was from Minnesota. And so when I think about some of the big sports figures just in Minnesota, right, like the, you know, we want, we'd go to the Twins games and watch Kirby Puckett or the Timberwolves had Kevin, um, Kevin Garnett. And we were big Vikings fans. Yeah. So we watched a lot of um, Chris, Chris Carter. But I think when I really think about who was um, a big influence on me, I would definitely say my dad. Um, you know, he played basketball growing up, but he was one of my first coaches. He coached our, you know, first little traveling team and spent a lot of time with me out on the driveway or, you know, we lived on a farm. We also had a basketball hoop in the machine shed. So for the winter months, you know, we were able to <laughs> play a little bit of basketball. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I definitely think he was a big inspiration for me. What I really appreciated about him and my mom was that they, you know, never pushed me in one direction when it came to sports. Because, I mean, I loved playing volleyball and softball as well, um, but they just kind of let me find my own path. And so I feel like I really appreciated that about them. But I would definitely say my dad was an inspiration to me. Awesome. Well, we are certainly thankful for your dad for pushing and allowing you to become the the buff great that you were, um, and, and and we just really appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. I know, um, you know, for us it's so important for our current players to have an opportunity to hear from, you know, our past, and so so we appreciate you taking the time and um, excited to to see you again this season. Yes, thanks so much, Jr. I mean, I know your you and your staff have done a wonderful job you know, trying to include all of us alumni, you know, we loved being plugged in, we love watching the team. Um, and so thank you for just even hosting this. It's fun to catch up with you and just to hear from other alumni. Yeah, absolutely. All right, as always, go Buffs. Go Buffs. <laughs>